Well, we kick off tonight's show on the G20 summit. India has expressed confidence this Friday that the group of 20 major economies will finalize a declaration at this weekend's summit in New Delhi. Now, negotiators have been struggling for days to agree on the language because of differences over Russia's military operation in Ukraine. Notably, parties hope to get Russia and China on board to produce a communique that will also address pressing global problems such as debt and climate change. India's G20 Sherpa Amitabh Kant adds that the leader's declaration will be a voice of the global south and developing nations as well. New Delhi leader's declaration is almost ready. I would not like to dwell on it because this declaration will be recommended to the leaders and the leaders will then accept it. And only after it has been accepted by the leaders, uh, I will be able, we'll be able to talk about the actual achievements of this uh, declaration. As far as AU is concerned, let me say that the Prime Minister, uh, who's a great believer in Global South, had uh, written to all the leaders to, uh, and there has been a very positive response, but formally, uh, that will come before the summit. Well, let's now pick up that conversation uh, with Mr. Kweku. He joins us again in Johannesburg. Great. Good to have you with us, uh, Mr. Kweku. Now, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is what we're hearing so far is that negotiators are making some progress on some of those sticky issues. What are your expectations for finding a way forward on some of these issues, given the friction that we've seen within the group? Well, first of all, I must say thanks for having me on board. I think the context is that first, um, there, there seemed to be a global uh, uh, summit fatigue, largely for me as I observed. And I think President Xi Jinping and also President uh, Vladimir Putin probably got that message. Not that they're tired of going to these meetings, but very little comes out of it. And in fact, especially, especially at the G7 and G20, uh, the G20 we're seeing tomorrow and Sunday, and those issues are really sticky, especially the Ukraine war. And I don't think there will be a, a, a place where a sense of coming together will bind people. It's still going to be very tense. The negotiations, I don't know what they're really negotiating because all the protagonists are very antagonists, are very far apart from each other. So the few things that might be agree on, especially climate change, maybe climate finance, uh, not even on technology where the United States and its allies are really sanctioning China and Russia. So my point is going to be tense. Um, I think it's going to be a watered down uh, recommendation for India. It's a really big snub against India for not having China, at least the two presidents of China and, and Russia there. Mm -hmm, quite right. Now, another interesting uh, development at this year's summit is that the G20 has agreed to give uh, the African Union membership uh, going forward. What do you make uh, of that announcement? Uh, do you think it is true? Could it still uh, unravel going forward? Well, I'd be surprised. I mean, even if they did it, Africa will probably have a sort of observer role, even while people are uh, speculating that Africa might have the same status as the European Union. I don't think so. Even if it did, it will be on paper. However, one key thing that's important is for once, the G20 is thinking about having Africa there. But there is a contradiction. We're, we're talking about having the African Union, but we still have two African presidents or two African uh, presidents representing two countries there. The president of South Africa, Sir Ramaphosa, and then the president of Nigeria, uh, Bola Tinubu. So who are they representing? Is it Africa, the African Union, or their country? And this is where these contradictions must be really ironed up. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good that Africa, for once, is seriously on the table. But the proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. Until we see real African voices in the G20, I won't believe that the representation is enough. Mm. Now, it is interesting you uh, say that, Mr. Kweku, because another thing uh, this year is the fact that there have been reports that the EU plans to take advantage uh, of the absence of China and also Russia at this summit to step up that engagement with Africa going forward. What opportunities uh, do you see for Africa uh, at this year's event beyond uh, the G20 membership? And do you think we will see them stepping up? 
Um, I'm still very skeptical. I mean, the opportunities, the first one for me that's probably important is that at least Africa is on the agenda of the G20. That's a good thing in terms of public relations, visibility, value for Africa. I think it's a very, that's a big opportunity for Africa. But in terms of real substantial issues, especially on the debt, African debt, this is a huge debt issue, infrastructure, health issues, and even uh, big issues like conflict and security. And we've seen, for example, that in Sahel, in the Sahel, we've had all these coups and Africans, are, African states are quite unstable. There's a great concern. I don't think the EU and the G20 at large will be able to solve that as easily, but it's an excellent start.